Hey guys, Ollie here, the wannabe pilot, wrapping up again for the second time my results and how I went about passing my uh, CPOA meteorology exam. I did a video only a couple days ago, but a friend of mine went over it and just reminded me that part of the CASA regulations, there's actually a CAR for it, 298A, which I gathered from a phone call that I had with CASA, uh, says uh, explicitly that we shouldn't discuss the individual questions that are actually in the exams. So I'm redoing the video and taking note that for future videos, we actually can't discuss the ins and outs, the details of these different questions that we have to task in the exams. I ended up getting only just 71% which was a little bit surprising considering how long I'd been studying meteorology for. We started in RPL at the start of the year, PPL, and now spending more or less three or four weeks on studying meteorology with the Bob Tate books and in our class time. I have a handful or more of KDRs, which I will run through. They're very broad, but They'll give you an idea of the, some of the things that I did trip up on over. Uh, winds, variations with the storms, mountain waves, fond winds, which I'm kicking myself on because Brett and I in our flyaway, I'm not sure if you remember from previous videos. We had a climb, we had attitude for a climb coming into the uh, Great Dividing Range at about 6,000 feet. Well, I, was, I, was about, I was about 6'4", but we're still not climbing. We spent some time dealing with some mountain waves, as you could see in real life. That should have given us enough time and actual real life experience to understand this subject to its utmost. Thunderstorms, microbursts, understanding the different, where the different winds and wind shear is happening within those systems. Atmospheric stability, this was to do with understanding actual what goes into a stable and unstable atmosphere. Inversions, fogs, when you're gonna see an inversion, when you're gonna see a fog uh, occur. Synoptic meteorology, so understanding what is happening in a synoptic chart in a different place, understanding all the different lines, colluded fronts, cold fronts, warm fronts. This was what that was all about. Composition of the atmosphere, what goes into the different layers of the atmosphere and you know, which layer goes where. Winds and synoptic meteorology, more to do with fronts. So as you can see there, I only read through things that had to do with more of the science-based points within meteorology. A lot of the forecasting and understanding forecasts, so from the different TAFs, reading TAFs, I was actually really good at, and that's probably what got me over the line in the end. You do pick up a lot of this whilst you're doing your private license and every time you fly from a school you have to produce understanding of the local and forecasted weather reports from the area. So that's probably what got me over the line in the end. Like I said, 71%, so it's only just the pass, 70% is the pass. So I'm looking forward to putting in some more effort and actually getting better results in the last three exams that I have to do. How I studied was by using the Bob Tate books and going through the end of chapter questions and then answering all of them and then going through and I actually bought the practice exams from the Bob Tate website and smashed them out the five days leading up. Like I said in the last video when I first did it, I wasn't completely sold on the practice exams being the best prep. They were really, really, really good for uh, nav and performance, but for Met, you need to understand the science behind the weather more so than, well, that was where I lacked in knowledge. So if I were to give my feedback, maybe cross-reference if you are or if you already do have the Bob Tate books, try and use something else that dives a little bit deeper into the science of the of weather. You know, I'm saying that here, it also might have been my fault in the fact that I didn't actually read the paragraphs and the subjects and the textbooks deep enough to really divulge all of that information and understand it to a point where I can take it into an exam and relay it back against the questions. So I'm 
better at doing the practice exams and then fixing what I'm not so good at, but you might be better at reading the text content and understanding it that way. And you know, it might actually really work for you, the Bob Tate books in that regard. But yeah, like I said, I've had more success doing the practice exams and then revising on the things that I got wrong. And this didn't quite work for me as well as I wanted, what I wanted. So that's my feedback. I would recommend really reading those all those different chapters in the Bob Tate books. And then that will give you just a very solid understanding. But all the best if you are going into your Met exam. It was a fun subject to learn. Very interesting to be able to take that and apply it to when we do fly, understanding the different clouds and weather systems that are coming through. So yeah, although a bit of a tedious one, I enjoyed it and yeah, wish you all your best if you are going into your uh, CMAT exam in the coming months, weeks or years. Happy flying, cheers.